Ultimately, the, the, the central battle zone of every spiritual battle that you and I are facing, like when I talk about the greatest battle for the hearts and minds of mankind in the history of the world, the central battle zone is always the human mind, the human heart, and the body, soul, and spirit, okay? Especially the mind, where, where there is a warfare going on between the deception of Satan, the lies of the devil, and what the Word of God says, and what the Holy Spirit is anointing regarding what the Word of God says. That's where the, the central battle is. And so, when I write a book, which I did, called The Greatest Battle for the Hearts and Minds of Mankind in the History of the World, or in my book Conquering the Matrix, or in my book Mass Awakening, or in my books... Uh, a Prophecy of the Future of America, Volume 1 and 2, and my other books, you'll notice that exposing spiritual deception is a, is a key area that I deal with because that is the central battlefield. So, for example, the Lord supernaturally leads me in my research and writing and direction. That's why it's uncanny that in the pages of The Greatest Battle, as well as my other books, there are all kinds of topics and subjects that I covered and wrote about before they came into being, like a pandemic, like the whole thing between socialism and Marxism. The Lord led me, literally, supernaturally, to, to really open up for God's people the secret, the secret behind Marxism, socialism, and capitalism, because the secret is that Cap, uh, capitalism, not capitalism, but the secret is that Marxism, socialism, uh, and, and things like that are really spiritual systems energized and created by the spirit of Antichrist. That's the great secret behind communism. And I document that in The Greatest Battle and Conquering the Matrix. You can get these at discounts at paulmcguire.us. I document that truth. That is one of the most important truths to understand. You cannot understand with, about, about what's going on unless you understand that there's a spiritual and supernatural driving or energy f force that drives communism, Marxism, <coughs> and socialism. <coughs> and that supernatural energy is Satan, Lucifer, fallen angels, and witchcraft. This is imperative to not only understand this, but you have to master it. When you master this truth, it's only then that you become spiritually armed and dangerous to the devil. And let me read you something. Because, you know, I talk about the greatest battle for the hearts and minds of mankind in the history of the world. But this greatest battle began thousands of years ago in the Garden of Eden, with Adam and Eve, who were given paradise, and not only that, they were given paradise, but they were given the supernatural authority by God to rule and reign on planet Earth. In other words, they were created by God to be the kings, the king and queen of planet Earth. Now, when we read the book of Genesis, we see the early and initial beginnings of this great spiritual battle. It's only when we discover and understand what the real truth is behind the initial spiritual battle in the Garden of Eden between Adam and Eve and Lucifer, Satan, or the serpent of old. It's only when we truly have a revelation from God through the Holy Spirit and His Word of what happened with Lucifer and Adam and Eve and the serpent of old, it's only when we really grasp that, that if the lights go on in our heart, soul, and mind, it's only then that we're able to wage victoriously an effective spiritual warfare against the powers of darkness. And in our time period, with what is happening now, what is transpiring now in our nation, 
We need to have a revelation of this truth and how to access the power and the knowledge of this truth and we need to know how to apply this truth into the intense spiritual battlefields raging all around us. If we do not know how to use our spiritual weapons, if we don't know what the, uh, the, the spiritual enemy looks like, if we don't know where the spiritual target is, then we will not be able to function victoriously and bring down the satanic strongholds that were erected by Lucifer in partnership with the serpent of old in the Garden of Eden with Adam and Eve. That's why you need to spread this message far and wide through every available means. So let me read you something. Remember, like communism, Marxism, socialism, like sex cults, motivational cults, all of these things proceed, conquer, enslave, and advance by one methodology. The common methodology by which all evil and satanic work advances is the methodology of, de of deception, especially spiritual deception. Communism is sold and packaged and marketed because it is sold as something exciting and dynamic. So communism spreads because it is sold via deception. Via deception. The cult leader spreads the cult via deception. Our nation is being undermined and uh, attempts are, are being made to, to have a, a violent overthrow of the United States of America via deception. Okay, so let me read this to you because this is critical. I don't believe that Christians should play games, by the way. I don't think you do either. There are many churches in America, a huge percentage, 87% of churches in America in my opinion, are playing games. They're playing church. Why? First of all, they forbid the reading and studying and teaching and preaching of Bible prophecy. Secondly, they don't take the Word of God as being true. Third, they don't really study to be approved. They're not prepared to fight spiritually. As such, because they have allowed themselves through spiritual neglect to become lazy, weak, and defeated, they have made themselves, and, and most tragically, they have not only made themselves, their children, their families, their husbands, their wives, their neighborhoods, their churches, their schools, and their nations, 
through their disobedience to the Word of God, <clears throat> they have made all these Christian institutions a soft target in which God's people um, and God's ministries can be easily uh, taken down because they're soft targets. And, and God never created the church and individual Christians to be soft targets. No, no, no. The opposite is true. The opposite is true. When God created individual Christians and raised up Christian ministries, and when God uh, uses the Christian church, it is God's primary expectation that His church, individual Christians, the supernatural body of Christ, all ministries, all of the work of God on planet Earth, it is God's expectation that in this greatest battle for the hearts and souls of mankind, it's God's great expectation that every true believer in Jesus Christ, that means you and me, and every true believer who attends a true church, that we learn how to fight a spiritual warfare, and we learn how to use spiritual weapons to win a spiritual warfare. So, for example, in Ephesians chapter 6, uh, verse 10, it says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. So what that means is, finally, my brothers and sisters, finally, uh, my fellow members of the body of Christ, be strong. The first thing the Apostle Paul says regarding spiritual warfare, the first thing he says is, be strong in the Lord. What that means is, you and I are not called to be strong in our flesh, uh, strong in our personal charisma, uh, strong in our uh, carnal sense, strong according to our pride, uh, strong according to uh, uh, gifts that we were given by God, both natural and spiritual. Our strength does not lie in, in the energy and power that we can muster up from our humanity. Our strength and power and victory is a consequence of you and I putting our, our faith in the supernatural power of God, where we're clothed with power from on high. That means we're clothed with power from on high. We're clothed with power... Uh, with the dunamis, the dynamite explosive power of the Holy Spirit clothes us. And it's when we're clothed with dunamis power from on high that we receive an anointing of power and ability that enables us to be victorious against the devil and his demons in any battle regarding spiritual warfare. So it says, Be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might, so it's the power of God's might, not, you know, not marketing, not money, not salesmanship. It's the power of his might. And then it says in verse 13, uh, excuse me, verse 11, Put on the whole armor of God that you may be, be able to, um, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. So put on the complete armor of God. Um, um, sword of the Spirit, uh, uh, the shield of faith, helmet of salvation, the whole armor of God. Put on the whole armor of God, okay, so that you and I can stand, that means not fall, but stand victoriously against the wiles of the devil. What are the wiles? You and I are supposed to put on the whole armor of God so that we can stand against the schemes, the strategies, the wicked plans, the deviousness, the wiles of the devil. See, that's how we win. Because he's a trickster, <clears throat> and Satan is a liar. <clears throat> Satan is the father, <clears throat> excuse me, of lies. So, uh, then it says, verse 12, For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. 
So our battle is not against people. <clears throat> it's not against political parties. Our battle is not against flesh and blood. Um, but our battle is against the principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. So what God is telling us here is that we're in a spiritual battlefield. We're in a spiritual war. war. We're supposed to put on the full armor of God, which is spiritual. And then we, are, we can be victorious to the degree that we recognize that we're not fighting based on our own strength or ability, but our fight, our real fight, is, is in the spiritual world. It's in the invisible realm. And our real fight is not against people and human institutions or political parties, but our real fight is against uh, principalities and powers and the rulers of the darkness of this age. So that hierarchy of demonic power and demons having different levels of ranking and power were able to, to conquer these different levels of demonic power um, because we recognize that we're, we're using spiritual weapons in a spiritual battlefield to, to be victorious. And therefore it says, therefore take up the whole armor of God. So again he reminds us, having done all to stand, and then you see a review of putting on the full armor of God, not just part of it, the whole deal. So what, what is God telling us? God is telling us that we need to be sober. We need to be alert because we are warring against a real devil and real demons. And the way we defeat a real devil and real demons is to expertly use our spiritual weapons and learn how to victoriously engage in spiritual warfare. That's how we win. Now, back to back to Genesis. First thing that happens is the devil comes to Eve and then Adam through the serpent of old, which was an erect reptilian serpent who's possessed by Satan. And thus, the serpent of old has supernatural satanic abilities to persuade, to hypnotize, to use mind control, to, to uh, use schemes, strategies, brainwashing, cunning, and especially mind war, uh, especially psyops, psychological operation warfare. The, the, the devil is a master of fighting men and women and taking them down because he knows how to get inside their head and bring them down. But God doesn't want that for us. So how does, how does uh, Satan and the serpent of old how do they implement their victory? How do they put Eve in deception? What causes Eve to deceive her husband? What's, what's, the, what's the crack in the wall? What's, why, is, why is Eve and Adam, why are they a soft target? Why are they vulnerable? They're vulnerable because they make the choice of not believing God's word, rejecting God's word, where God says, you can eat from anything in the garden, you can do anything that you want, but you cannot, the only commandment is you cannot eat from the fruit of the tree in the middle of the garden. Adam and Eve ignore that one clear commandment. And instead, they ignore the truth of the commandment. And instead, and then they reject God's word. And then they choose to believe the lie. They choose to believe the deception. And it's right here where they choose to believe the lie, where they choose to believe the deception, it's right there that they lose the greatest battle for the hearts and minds of mankind in the history of the world at, at, in its very beginning phase. It's right there that they lose because their loss is attributed to the fact that they reject God's word, they stop believing God's word, and they believe the lies and the deception of Satan. That brings them down. So what happens is um, 
they are they go they get under a curse because she ate from the tree in the middle of the garden because Satan or Lucifer and the indwelt serpent you know plays mind games on her and in her delusion and deception she eats of the fruit of the tree in the middle of the garden and then she coaxes uh, um, Adam to do the same thing bam at that point the death force enters the human race at that point they activate the law of sin and death the death force enters the human race they fall they lose all their supernatural power and authority they lose their their gift of living as immortal beings and they begin to die and they and they begin to degrade in, in, in their powers and they and they begin to lose their supernatural authority okay they become mere humans versus supernatural humans and so the curse of the law of sin and death enters them they recognize they're naked they're ashamed they're filled with fear they're disoriented why what's the root reason because they believed a deception rather than the truth so whenever men and women choose to reject God's word and believe a deception rather than the truth they summon or invite a curse a powerful curse to come upon the human race and their descendants and we we are reeling from that impact right now so where we are in time and history is we are in the vicinity of the second coming of Jesus Christ the devil knows that his hour is short so he's he's ramping up the spiritual deception and we see spiritual deception if we look at a whole list of massive problems and dangers facing the church, facing you, facing every family, facing our nation, facing this world. If we look at that long list of very serious dangers, flashing red lights if you will, we'll notice that behind every danger that is looming and, and itching to destroy us, Behind every danger is a powerful work of satanic spiritual deception that has caused men and women to not only be spiritually deceived, but spiritually deluded. And when they're spiritually deceived and spiritually deluded, they become soft targets and are vulnerable. Delusion... Um, Deception always escalates. So a small deception through lies end up, ends up being a, a big lie. And so it begins to accelerate. And now we live in a world <clears throat> where the average American, because we've rejected the Word of God in our nation, the average American no longer possesses the natural gifts that God once bestowed upon people in America and the average American is no longer a recipient of the spiritual gifts that God once poured out upon America. Remember that when America was founded by the Pilgrims and Puritans, the Pilgrims and Puritans, as I outline in my book, The Greatest Battle for the Hearts and Minds of Mankind in the History of the World, the spiritual pilgrims entered into a supernatural contract or covenant with God based on Deuteronomy 28 which simply says if you worship the true God and you don't worship idols if you diligently hearken unto the voice of the Lord your God which means you diligently obey everything that the Word of God says and you, you diligently do everything that the Word of God says <clears throat> then God promises to supernaturally raise up that nation or raise up that people above all the nations on planet earth so despite the fact america has many imperfections and sins and flaws america was raised up above all nations on earth america has had the greatest economy despite its faults america has produced more freedom for more people than any other nation in human history and America is the only nation with an American dream. And America is the only nation that has 
a prosperous working class and middle class. And America is the only nation on earth that has guaranteed freedoms like the Constitution and the Bill of Rights, freedom of speech, freedom of religion, freedom of the press, so on and so forth. So, when we turn on our television sets, and the average American, and more tragically, the average Christian, the average so-called Bible-believing Christian, no longer has the minimal ability to, to discern the difference between a lie and the truth or no longer has the ability to perceive what used to be obvious, no longer has the ability to, to think on a minimal level intelligently. And the reason for that is we have embraced deception and delusion. There's deception on every hand going on in our nation right now. And we have to remember the basic biblical principle, the basic biblical teaching, which I just shared with you in Genesis. Every time the devil's kingdom advances, every time Satan and Lucifer and the fallen angels take more territory, steal more souls, and they're bent on total destruction of our nation, by the way. Every time um, the devil advances in his purposes, he always uses variations of the same strategy, which is deception, delusion, the wiles of the devil, the twisting, the manipulation of the truth, hypnotic type messages, mind control, covering things up. The, the, the devil always uses the same strategy. Finally, in the book of Acts, in, in the book of Acts and before the book of Acts, we are warned in the Bible by Jesus that one of the major signs of the times is a vast increase of spiritual deception. False prophets, false teachers, false doctrine, false Christ, false prophets, false messiahs. All spiritual deception. And so spiritual deception is Satan's number one weapon. That's how he, called, that's how he caused Adam and Eve to fall. That's how he deceives people from uh, not seeing the, the gospel of Jesus Christ.